Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So this is a continuation uh, from the video that I did on how to decarboxylate cannabis. Uh, next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take the decarboxylated cannabis and put it into a coffee grinder, grind it up, and then we'll add it to a pot that will have uh, a cup's worth of butter melting into. So yeah, um, before we get into that, I'm smoking right now OG Kush right here, and it's most delightful. I've got uh, my pipe here. <clears throat> like I said in the... Um, the video that I did about decarboxylating the cannabis, I'm not going to do that one step where after they grind up the decarboxylated cannabis, they uh, they put it into a crock pot and have put water in there, like a cup of water, and then the butter, and then the herb. Well, I'm not going to do all that because what they end up doing, that ends up cooking from seven to nine hours straight in a crock pot. And um, after that, what they end up doing is straining the plant material out using cheesecloth. Then what do you do with that plant material when it's done? There's no reference to that or any helpful ideas. It just seems like a waste. So all that I'm going to do is that. I'm just going to um, take the decarboxylated cannabis, <laughs> grind it in the grinder, put it into the melted butter, get it cooking for quite a while, probably like five minutes to where it cooks and the herb gets, you know, cooked in there really well. And then I'll start making the cookies with it. I'm, I'm just immediate when it comes to making cannabis butter. But I just wanted to explore and see what decarboxylating the cannabis ahead of time would do. Okay, let's see. I'll show you what it looks like right now. Let's kind of move the camera over here. <coughs> right here. You'll see a difference. It's it's more toasted. It's less green. So that's how you can tell. Let's see. Bring it over here. Let's tilt this down a little bit. Did that work? There we go. We got it. Bring it up here. There we go. See, it's toasted. You just want it to be kind of like a, like they say, a golden brown, but because the herb that I was using has a lot of orange in it, it's more brown now. So, so it's well, well de decarboxylated. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that word. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it, bring the camera over to the stove so you can see what I'm going to do here with um, melting the butter in there. Let's readjust this camera here. There we go, so we can get inside of there and see it, what's going on. that work? Yeah, this is what I'll do. I'll just put it right here. And I'll put the butter in. And then I'll show it to you in just a second. So I'm just using two sticks of butter, which is always equivalent to one cup of butter. I'm using a saucepan, <clears throat> and if you want to get really, um, if you want to be really picky about it, you can get organic butter. You can get um, unsweetened butter. Some say not to use unsalted butter. I don't know why that is, but I don't see why that would be a big difference. Because the recipe does call for salt for the sugar cookies we're going to make with this butter so. so it doesn't really matter I don't think but I've never tried unsalted butter on with cookies I don't think so anyway so you're gonna want to heat this up and you're gonna want to melt the butter inside the saucepan um, once the butter is melted inside the saucepan you're gonna want to um, add your decarboxylated cannabis in there 
And so what I'm going to do right now while this butter is melting, I'm going to come back over here to the, this cannabis here. I keep saying decarboxylate over and over again. Take the decarboxylated cannabis <laughs> and put it in the uh, coffee grinder and grind it up. So once that butter is melted, we'll just add it to the butter and let it mix in there for a while. It's always a good idea to get invested in like a coffee grinder if you're going to be cooking with cannabis a lot. Because after you grind it, not only is it makes it easier to break it down, but after you use a coffee grinder, the remains that's left in there of the cannabis is keef. So, <laughs> keef is definitely as strong, or can be just as strong as hash, really. Ah, I almost dropped this. <laughs> so we go. So we're going to uh, grind this up here. And the butter is coming along too. It's melting over there. Sometimes you can uh, you can just like multitask sometimes when you bake it. Anyway, yeah. If you want to you want to uh, grind it up. It doesn't have to be to a fine powder, but just grind it up good enough. So it's gonna get loud. See how this is. Yeah, this is the consistency I'm going to want. I'll show you. Let me bring the camera over to it so you can see what I'm talking about. So that's the consistency you want it to be. And let me show my fingers. See, like that. It's kind of like, kind of like this, like ground up uh, sage. Even better of a comparison, just like, sh it's kind of like brown sugar in a way, the, the kind of texture and yeah. So there you go. That's all you, could, that's all you have to do. So I'm going to bring you over here to the saucepan here area on the stove. And I'm going to melt this, continue melting the butter down. Let me grab the spatula. Put a little spatula here, right here. Um, Let's bring this over here like this, like so. See that's melted in there? Ah! It's coming along. Sometimes when uh, I want to make the butter melt a little bit faster, I'll just like stir it. Stir it while it's on the, on the stove to make it come about faster. <laughs> so yeah, that's two sticks of butter. Once it melts, we'll add the ground up um, cannabis, decarboxylated cannabis in there and see what a difference it makes. While, while we're um, letting this buttermilk, buttermilk, <laughs> while we're letting this butter melt, I want to read to you guys a little bit about the um, decarboxylation process. Bring this over here to this chair where I'm sitting. See if this is where you'll be able to see me. Okay, yeah. It's right there. Okay. Yeah, save the space in the book that I've been referring to, the Cannabis Encyclopedia by Jorge Cervantes, this right here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've talked about this before, this uh, book. It's been a very good uh, resource. But anyway, there's this chapter in here about decarboxylation and solubil sol solubilization. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> but it talks about how raw cannabis is generally non-intoxicating but may have some psychoactive effects depending on how much free THC is present versus THCA. Patients report that the therapeutic effort effects of raw cannabis include providing relief from spasticity and inflammation and some reported no therapeutic effect. Cannabinoids are found in the form of acids, THCA, and attached to the carboxylic group, COOH. It must first be liberated, that is, cannabinoids, including THC, must change from an acid to a non-acid form to become psychoactive. So the process of decarboxylation converts CBD and non-psychoactive THC acid found in raw cannabis to psychoactive non-acid THC. 
So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that, share that little bit of knowledge I learned.